And this is how they met. Mr. Brown, I really love you. A woman's voice echoed in the dimly lit, cold, concrete underground garage. It was so loud that it startled Nora enough for her to almost fall from her hand. She had been obliviously making her way towards her parked car when the voice made her stop. Who would have thought that she would witness a confession in this dark, cold place? What did you say? Nora heard a deep and husky voice. It was so cold that she flinched, even though she was not the one the man was talking to. Perhaps she reacted like that because the man sounded so incredibly intimidating. His tone made him seem offended, as if what was supposed to be a romantic confession was in fact an insult. I said, I love you. Nora heard the woman's voice again. I love you so much. I already fell for you the first time I saw you. The woman's voice cracked with overwhelming emotions. Nora held her breath, waiting for his response. But only silence followed. At first, she was tempted to steal a glance at the couple. However, she thought it was not the right thing to do. So, she waited in silence. Finally, she heard the man's reply. Is that all? Was all he responded, causing Nora to gasp in disbelief. Wow, he's so cruel. Wh what? The woman sounded like she was utterly shocked. Tell me, what do you want? I... I've been in love with you since the beginning. I've been your girl for two months now. But you've never said anything about how you feel about me. Mr. Brown, I... All I want is... I just want you to love me back. Nora could tell from the voice of the lady that she was on the verge of breaking down. And yet, the man's voice didn't soften even a little bit after hearing her. Instead, he sounded even more menacing as he responded to her. We're done, he said nonchalantly without a care in the world. There was simply no trace of warmth in his voice at all. What? I won't repeat myself. Why? Mr. Brown, wh what are you saying? This is not... The contract I signed clearly stated that I would be your girl for three months. It's only been two months. But now you're saying we're over? What do you mean by... Caitlin, didn't you properly read the contract? The man's tone became even colder, almost harsh. Charlie, come over here and read the condition she didn't read. Nora was shocked to her bones hearing their bizarre conversation. A contract? Oh goodness, what are they saying? She could tell that the situation was getting worse, so she really wanted to leave now. But if she moved now, they would see her. Left without a choice, she could only stay hidden and listen, even if she didn't want to. Miss Miller, here is one of the two conditions from that contract you signed. Another man started talking. The contracted girlfriend can demand anything except for one thing, love or affection. Once the contracted girlfriend demands to be loved in return, the contract will automatically become null and void. Nora was so shocked... She couldn't stop herself from taking a peek at them. She just couldn't wrap her mind around what was happening. She couldn't believe that something so outrageous as this was happening in real life. This was absolute madness to someone like her. When she saw the girl, her hands flew to her own mouth. <gasps> Is that Caitlin Miller? The famous actress? She couldn't believe her eyes. Why would a beautiful woman like her beg for a man's love? More importantly, the relationship was contractual? This beautiful superstar was some ruthless man's contracted girlfriend? The entertainment world would be shaken if they found out about this. Nora's widened eyes then shifted to the man, but she couldn't see his face because he had his back to her. I warned you long ago, I don't do love and never will. And you of all people should already be well aware of how I deal with anyone who breaks the conditions in the contract, the man said. Nora shivered 
as she watched Caitlin Miller fall to her knees. The famous heartthrob that everyone praised and desired had succumbed to such a faith. The superstar looked like all her blood was being drained all at once from her body as she continued to listen to the man. Then, just like that, she was dragged away by a bulky man in black towards another car. When her car had driven off, Nora finally came back to her senses and quickly hit again. However, Come out. I know you're there, the man ordered. She was so shocked that she just froze for a long while, her body unable to move. Now, he shouted. She knew he was talking to her, and after what she had seen, Nora was sure it was best not to test his temper any further. With that thought in mind, she took a deep breath and slowly turned towards him. Come here, the man commanded. Nora slowly lifted her face trying to push away her nerves as much as possible. She couldn't remember if anyone ever made her feel this frightened before in her entire life. As soon as their eyes met, Nora almost forgot about being anxious. Instead, she gaped at him with wide eyes. The man before her was just so good-looking. No, good-looking was actually a huge understatement. She was sure that he was a hundred times more handsome than any celebrity she had ever seen in her life. He was tall. His inky dark hair looked like it was combed by his fingers and swept back away from his face. He had a strong, defined, and masculine jaw. There was perfection in her eyes. He just looked too good to be true. She was utterly impressed. And she had never been impressed by a man's beauty like this before. How could a mortal man look this stunning? No wonder a beautiful woman like Caitlin Miller begged for his love. But this stunning creature was glaring down at her. His eyes were hostile, making her want to shrink to the floor and disappear. The way he looked at her was definitely the definition of the phrase, if looks could kill. Who are you? A paparazzi? Nora flinched back from the resentment in his voice. His ice-cold eyes glimmered with a dangerous light, and it chilled her more than the freezing temperature of the basement they were standing in. She couldn't help but think that this man was definitely the perfect example of the inhumanly beautiful demon king she often read about in fantasy books. After swallowing her own saliva, Nora forced herself to respond to him. No, I'm not. She shook her head, but the man's eyes narrowed. And then, he moved his feet, walking closer to her. Every step he took felt like a ticking time bomb to her. But surprisingly, she was able to hold her ground, despite her knees shaking a little. When the man stopped just less than a meter before her, she couldn't help but bite her bottom lip. The man was scrutinizing her, looking at her like she was some prey. But she knew with one look into those eyes that dangerous was an understatement to describe him. Little lamb, did you hear everything? He asked, his gaze seeming deadlier than the sharpest dagger. He was glaring at her like he wanted to kill her. She had never seen eyes as beautiful and yet as deadly cold as his. I'm sorry, I... I didn't mean to... Nora managed to answer when the man suddenly raised his hand towards her neck. She flinched in fear as she shut her eyes, thinking that the man was going to strangle her. But that didn't happen. Slowly, Nora opened her eyes. He did not say a word. He was solely focused on her bright yellow knitted scarf. For some reason, the daggers and the ancient glaciers in his eyes seemed to have been washed away and were suddenly replaced with an odd, calm blankness. She looked down, and when she saw his fingers fiddling with the edge of her knitted scarf, Nora simply froze again. Her heart was beating so erratically, it felt as if a hammer was inside her chest. Hmm, yellow, he murmured to himself as he dropped his hand, and then the look in his eyes changed again. He didn't look harsh and cold anymore as he did moments ago. 
Go home, he said, his voice gentler than before. Just like that, he started turning around to leave. Nora exhaled as she watched him move away from her. She should have been running away now that the demon finally let her go unscathed, but something kept her grounded. She just stood there, unmoving, her gaze watching his perfect and graceful figure retreating. Closing her fists tightly that her knuckles turned white, she suddenly called out, Wait, mister! Please! The chauffeur had already opened the door for him to enter. Her voice echoed in the cold parking lot, and he looked over to her. What? He replied without turning to look at her. Fearlessly, Nora began walking towards him. She was suddenly high on adrenaline, and she felt brave. Her knees had stopped trembling, and the fear in her eyes was replaced with something else. Resolve. Was everything you said true? That you do not love? She asked, as she stood less than a few inches behind him. Are you really sure you won't fall for anyone? The man finally turned to look at her. His dark gray eyes assessed her with disbelief and then interest. From what I understand, you're willing to make someone your girlfriend as long as she won't demand your love, right? She asked again. Silence reigned between them for a moment. The man stared at her through his narrowed eyes. He seemed astonished by her blunt words, as if he was looking at an unbelievable creature. Why are you asking? His lips now curved up in a wicked, amused smile. Still, his tone carried a hint of wickedness. I'm just curious. Is it true? She answered, her voice unbelievably calm. So what if it was? And what if it's not? Nora pressed her lips tight. If it's true, how can you be so sure? Do you really believe that you will never fall for anyone? Ever? What she got as a response was a low chuckle. The man looked like a devil when he laughed, the humor not reaching his eyes. But somehow, Nora felt like he was truly amused by her questions. Yellow, tell me. What exactly are you trying to say? He fiddled with the edge of her scarf again, his thin lips still curved up to a dangerous and mischievous smile. I... I just think no one is completely incapable of love. Maybe you just haven't met that special someone who has an axe to force your heart open. Little Yellow, are you saying you want to try me? His eyes looked directly at hers, as if his gaze could read through her soul. Gulping nervously, Nora met his challenging gaze. Biting her lip, she didn't drop her eyes as she nodded her head. Yes, she said her voice strong and decisive, crazy for the first time. As the words left Nora's mouth, the man in front of her laughed. <laughs> Creasing her brows, Nora tried to show him how serious she was. But when she said she was serious, her intensity seemed to have only made the man more amused. After he stopped laughing, the man spoke. Are you perhaps thinking that you could eventually make me fall in love? Too bad, Yellow. Countless women already tried that. And besides, I don't think you are capable of that. His eyes traveled from her head down to her toes. And you heard me correctly. I don't do love. Never. So don't waste your brain cells thinking about it. His voice was smoldering, despite the smile on his face. But Nora was unfazed. How about you try me? I promise I will not demand you to love me back, she promised, even raising her hand like a Girl Scout, causing the man to laugh again. Yellow, you're such a brave little girl. His smile faded, and a hard edge crept into his voice. <laughs> Please stop calling me Yellow. My name is Nora, and I'm not a little girl. I'm about to turn 22. The man's expression abruptly shifted once again, and he chuckled. His laugh seemed to have some sort of magic as it lingered in her ears. His laughter was unexpectedly so pleasing. 
Indeed, you are one brave little girl, Yellow. Do you know who I am? No. And yet you're still here offering yourself to me blindly? She nodded, and the man now smirked evilly. He stared at her from head to toe for the second time as he licked his lips. Then he stepped forward, his long, graceful finger lifting her chin. Little lamb, let me tell you this. He started, his voice as low as a whisper. Then he continued, You're standing before the gates of hell right now. Doing this means ruining your life. Are you ready to step down to hell with me? His eyes blazed. A warning was burning within it, and Nora knew he was more than serious about his caution. His intensity made her shudder slightly, a chill creeping down her neck. But his warning wasn't enough to make her give in. She had never been this brave, or crazy in her life. She was already imagining lots of things in her head. The possible outcome of this madness she was trying to throw herself into, of course, terrified her. However, every time she thought about her future, a dark cloud always persisted. She asked herself a question in her head. Was there anything that terrified her at this point? Wasn't she looking for something like this? For a man like this? As the silence dragged on, the man's lips curved up into a triumphant, mocking smile. His hand landed on her head softly, and to her surprise, he ruffled her hair. Leaning in closer, he spoke once again. Hell is not a good place. At least for a little lamb like you. I'm sure you're aware of that. Now run away while I'm still being nice and calm, he whispered. And then he turned to leave, so casually as if nothing just happened. But after three steps, the girl stopped him again. The hell you're talking about, she mumbled. I... I'd like to see it for myself. Take me there. Nora knew she sounded like a mad woman. You're crazy, Nora, a whisper in her head told her. But the oddest thing was that she didn't feel it. She was totally sane, and completely clear-headed. This was the most daring thing she had ever done in her life, and the most terrifying, too. Yet, she was calmer than ever, more certain about this than anything else. The man directed a gaze of disbelief at her. His eyes pierced through her, as if he was trying to pry into her soul. But when he saw the unwavering look in her eyes, he shook his head. He failed to understand this little fragile creature in front of him. Everyone yearned for heaven. Yet this girl wished to experience hell. He was simply stupefied. This little girl might be the most intriguing person he had ever met. Yellow, what's your name? He finally asked. Nora. Nora Forbes. Nora. He echoed her name as he fiddled with her yellow scarf again. Her name on his lips sounded so nice. He seemed to be thinking about something as he looked into her eyes again before a wicked, devastating smile appeared on his glorious face. Sorry, but... He started as he gazed at her clothes. I'm not interested in unattractive girls. His comment and that playful smirk on his face aggravated her. She was usually unaffected by these kinds of judgmental comments that people often threw at her. She simply didn't care what they said about her looks. But why was it that this man's comment riled her up this much? Just do you wait? I'll prove to you how attractive I can be! Nora was quick to retort. She didn't even know how she managed to speak like this. She was used to not giving any attention to what other people said. She wouldn't even bother justifying herself to them. So what she was saying right now was a shock, even to herself. She didn't know she was capable of speaking this way, until now. But then, the man's response was another fascinating chuckle. <laughs> Yellow, you really are unbelievable, he said before his expression abruptly shifted again. The corner of his lips turned down in disapproval. 
but I'm serious. I'm not into little girls. Caitlin Miller is just two years older than me, she argued, not backing down. Caitlin is a mature, sexy woman, and you're... He raised an eyebrow. Even though you're two years younger than her, you're like a grandmother. Nora was getting more and more aggravated. No one ever made her feel like this before. The way she dressed up today was, as always, purposely unfashionable. Her hair was braided in pigtails, loose strands of hair poking out from many places. She was wearing fake, thick eyeglasses, and her winter coat was a boring and unfashionable brown color. She knew she looked unappealing at the moment. After all, this was the appearance she was aiming for today. For her to look so unattractive that no man would bother to look at her. I purposely dressed like this today, she hissed bravely. If only she knew that she would meet this man at the end of the day, she would have at least made herself a little more presentable. Oh, really? I'll show you. The man snickered, shaking his head. He was looking at her with wonder and disbelief. For a moment, there was a strange and dangerous glimmer in his eyes as he stared at her. But it abruptly disappeared as his hand landed on her head. Go home, Yellow. It's late. He smiled and entered his car. Wait! She called out, but the man only waved at her before the car left, leaving her astounded and unexpectedly upset. Nora was incredibly frustrated. She was pouting, her brows were pulled together, as she entered her car. She couldn't understand why that rude man had this unnerving effect on her. Was it because he rejected and mocked her appearance? But she was truly used to this kind of thing. Something like that definitely shouldn't frustrate her to this extent. More importantly, her heart was still pounding. The man was long gone, and yet she was still nervous. What was going on? Could it be that this nervousness was the aftershock of her bravery? That was the only sensible reason she could think of. Shaking her head to clear her mind, Nora just started the engine when someone knocked on the car's window. A man was standing there, smiling at her. He was wearing a black leather jacket and was also unbelievably pleasing to the eyes. Was there something wrong with this place? Why do overly good-looking men keep popping out of nowhere? Nora didn't dare roll down her window. What her eyes looked for first were the locations of the CCTV cameras. When she spotted one right above her car, she relaxed a little, but she was still hesitant. You're so unbelievably outrageous, Nora. You didn't fear offering yourself to that scary stranger, but now you're afraid to open your window to this pleasant-looking one? She mumbled to herself shaking her head, as though she was now convinced that she was crazy. The man knocked again, flashing his pleasant smile, as if he was using his beauty to lure her out. I have something to give you, she read his lips. Heaving a sigh, she finally rolled down the car's window. Hello, miss, he grinned, flashing his white teeth. He was truly another out-of-this-world beauty. Although to her, that ruthless man still beat him well when she compared their looks. What is it? Do you need something? She asked politely. The man leaned in on the car and gave her a piece of paper. If you want to meet that man again, just contact me. I'll let you know where to find him, he said, smiling kindly at her. He had pleasant energy around him that made one not feel that he had any ulterior motives. He looked like the kind of man that would easily entice people with just his sweet smile. Still, Nora had a hunch that this one was dangerous too. That man? Nora creased her brows, trying to confirm, even though she already knew who he was talking about. Hmm, that cold man who told you that you're unattractive? He grinned, and Nora blanked at him. Her frustration somehow came back. You know him? She finally asked. And the man nodded. He's my friend. Why would you want me to meet him? Because you want to show him that his judgment is wrong. So let's just say I'm helping you prove your point. He grinned again, looking as though he was encouraging her. Nora was even more confused. But before she could say anything more, he spoke again. 
You don't want to? Did you already change your mind? He asked, seemingly disappointed. But the moment he began retracting his hand, Nora took the piece of paper he was holding out to her. The man smiled in satisfaction before he moved away. Bye-bye, Miss Yellow. See you. He waved, and then before she knew it, he disappeared from her sight, leaving her blinking in confusion and curiosity as she stared at the note in her hand, thinking about him. Nora started her car after a moment, driving away from the basement. As she continued to drive, her mind wandered over what she had done. For a moment, she felt astonished at her own behavior. It was only now that she realized how dangerous it was what she had done. Feeling disbelief wash over her, another side of her mind argued with her rationality. She was already 22 and still never had a boyfriend. She grew up within a peaceful, loving family, and she had grown up into a really good girl. Some even compared her to untainted snow, well-mannered and pure. But most mocked her, calling her Miss Goody Two Shoes or Little Miss Chris. As she was growing up, Nora had gotten used to other people mocking her. But her grandparents always encouraged and advised her to not let the water around her enter her ship. Otherwise, she would drown. She had been raised to keep a positive mindset, and she decided that there was no way she would let those kinds of people drown her. She had a reason for why she had never had a boyfriend in her 22 years of existence. When she was 17, she realized that she had developed a trauma. She was afraid of having someone fall in love with her. Nora had witnessed just how much her father suffered day by day, even years after her mother died. It was unbearable for her to even watch him. Her father loved her mother so much that even after nearly two decades after her death, she still saw her dad crying at night, looking at his wife's photo. She had seen just how painful it was to lose someone you loved through her father. It was nothing but torture. She even once heard her father saying that he didn't feel alive anymore since that day her mother died. She knew that her father was only holding on because of her. Years after her mother's death, Nora was diagnosed with the same illness that killed her mother. It appeared that she inherited the illness from her, and since then, she'd been battling with it. She was only 17 at that time, and she knew that just like her mother, she only had five more years to live. That was why she always rejected the boys who showed any interest in her. There were a few of them, but her fear would always be triggered, especially when someone confessed to her. All she could say to them was sorry. Due to that, Nora avoided boys as much as she could. She even purposely dressed quite unfashionably to become less attractive. However, as years passed by, Nora started to question herself. Will I die just like this? The desires that she had been suppressing all this time were getting out of control. She had been dreaming of wanting to experience how it would feel like to love someone. She wanted to know how it would feel like to have butterflies in one's stomach, and how it would feel to kiss and embrace that person you love with all your heart. She had read many books and watched a lot of rom-coms, and she couldn't help but wish she could at least experience this so-called love before she died. That was her only wish, to fall in love, to find someone she could fall in love with. But she was torn. She was afraid and worried sick. She didn't want to leave someone behind to suffer when she was gone. She didn't want anyone to experience the loss and pain her father was going through until now. For years, She'd been thinking about it, and she thought she had already accepted her fate. But now that her due date was getting closer, the desire in her heart only kept on getting stronger. So, she decided to be brave and try her best to make her wish come true with the little time she had left. The only way she could think of to fulfill her wish was to find a man who she could fall in love with, but who would never fall in love with her. She had heard and read stories about one-sided love. She knew that that kind of love was excruciatingly painful. Still, 
she wanted it. If this was the only way for her to experience falling in love, she would be willing to throw herself in it, even if it meant being hurt. She believes that she could handle the pain of loving someone who didn't love her back more than dying without knowing what love felt like at all. Perhaps she was thinking about the quote she once read when she was 18 that said, It is better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all. Nora once anonymously shared her situation online and asked about what to do. Her thread garnered lots of attention and different contradicting reactions occurred. Since you don't want someone to fall in love with you, then why don't you go and pick a random bad guy? I mean, there are a lot of jerks and heartless idiots out there who only know how to break hearts, was one of the pieces of advice she wanted to try. But what if that supposedly heartless someone would fall for her in the end? Nora still had a year left. She was doing fine for now. The people around her, except her family, didn't even know that she was sick. But her mother was like this back then, too. Nora somehow knew that her health would start to worsen in the fifth year, this year. She could even foresee that she might have to start going back and forth from the hospital in the next month or two. She was aware that she didn't have much time left. The fact gave spark to her determination once again, and her mind took her towards the mysterious stranger. She could still not get over it. Her rational side of the brain scoffed at her. Everything that had happened to her started replaying in her mind, and she couldn't believe herself. Did she actually do something so outrageous like that? It was simply unbelievable. Now that she pondered about it, she couldn't fathom where she got her bravery from to approach him. Much more offering herself to a stranger as mysterious and dangerous as him. Was she that desperate? Nora was aware that what she did was pure madness. But deep in her heart, she didn't regret it. And the fact that that man rejected her unexpectedly motivated her. She thought that he was the man she had been looking for. A heartless man who didn't fall for anyone. She didn't know why, but she believed him when he said he didn't do love and never would. Maybe it was because she could see the truth in his eyes. She didn't know why, but she just felt that the man had an icy heart that would never, ever melt. But was it possible for her to fall in love with such a man, she wondered. Would it be possible for her to love a man who was cold, so cold that he might even scare her poor heart away? She didn't know, but like Eve, she wanted to taste the forbidden fruit, even though she knew it might bring her pain. Besides, didn't they say that love builds up and love is blind? At this point, she thought that there was no reason for her to even tell herself to be careful anymore. There was no point for her to chicken out anymore, because she was going to die soon. And if she wanted her wish to come true, she had to do it now. She just knew that this was her last chance. The one, or is it? When Nora arrived home, her family was waiting for her in the living room watching their favorite TV show. They then had another pleasant and peaceful dinner before Nora finally went to her room. After taking a shower, she lay in her bed. She had been thinking about that man all night, even when she was in the shower. Strangely, she couldn't stop. Was it because he rejected her? Probably not. Maybe it was because of his ever-so-striking appearance? The probability was high. Thinking about his personality, the way he carried himself as he spoke to her, Nora doubted if she had not just made him up in her mind. As if to prove herself that he was real, she turned around on the bed to look at the bedside table. The note that the pleasant man in the black jacket gave her rested on the table. Picking it up, she opened it and stared at it for a long while. Who was he? The thought ran her mind, making her curiosity peak even more. As she lay there, still thinking about the man, her eyes finally drifted close. The next thing she knew, the sun was already streaming through her windows. 
She rose and did her usual routine, arranged her bed, helped their grandmother prepare their breakfast, and after eating together, she got ready for work. Once she was ready, she came out of her room and kissed her family goodbye before she drove back towards the city. After Nora graduated from college, she volunteered to work at the Morning Sun Orphanage. Her family co-founded that orphanage, and she had become a part-time volunteer since high school. Her job was mainly assisting the teachers during class time. She was assigned to read books to the kids on the weekdays, except Fridays, and she loved what she was doing. She had grown to care very much about the children, and she treated them as her family. She was truly happy extending any help for as long as she was able. It was Monday, so the kids that hadn't seen her for three days were excited to see her. They embraced her one by one in the hallway as soon as they saw her. Nora, we missed you! The youngest in the bunch, Betty, kissed her on her cheek. I missed you too, darling. Now let's get inside. Your teacher's coming. Nora assisted Mrs. Smith the kids' teacher, the whole day. She read the story of the little prince this time, and when the class was over, Nora headed to a coffee shop near the orphanage. She had sent Jessica, her best friend, a message last night that she wanted to talk to her about something. So they planned to meet at this shop, their favorite meeting place since college. How are you? You were pretty drunk last night. Nora was looking at Jessica with a raised brow. Uh, do I look that bad? Her friend groaned. Yep. Don't lie, Nora. I made sure that my eye bags are perfectly covered. She huffed, and Nora could only chuckle. Her friend Jessica William was insanely rich. In fact, their lifestyle was so different from each other, Nora sometimes wondered how they had come to become such great friends. Jessica, during college, was envied by many. She was pretty, super rich, and had lots of guys pinning after her. However, she was alone at school. Only boys who wanted to hit on her approached her, and the ladies avoided her like the plague. When Nora began talking to her, and they actually became close, the students started calling her Jessica's maid. She couldn't blame them. She did look like a maid compared to the fashionable and sophisticated Jessica. But Nora didn't care. She knew that Jessica was a good person, and she was her friend no matter what anyone said. Back then, Jessica was the one who kept being enraged every time people mocked Nora. She even insisted on dressing her up. God only knew how many times she had begged her. But Nora refused her again and again until the girl eventually gave up. So, what's the agenda? I'm really curious, you know? You calling me out like this is so rare. Jessica sipped on her drink as she looked at her friend with narrowed eyes. Letting out a deep sigh, Nora pressed her lips tightly before she looked at her. I have found a man, <laughs> Nora said, and Jessica choked. Careful, Jessica. <laughs> what did you say? Y you? D did, did you find a man? You? Jessica looked like she just heard something unbelievable. Calm down. Don't be too loud. Oh my god, Nora. How can I be calm right now? You, my ever so innocent Nora, finally found a man you like? Well, I still can't say if I like him, but... He's the man I've been looking for. And he's the one I want. Wow, this is unbelievable. Who is he? Who is this man that caught my dearest Nora's eyes? Huh? Jessica asked with excitement. Actually, I failed to get his name. All I know is that his surname is Brown. Nora's response made Jessica pout. But she was quick to bounce back to being excited and asked her about how and where she had seen him. Nora told her that she saw the man in the parking space of Jessica's apartment building last night. But of course, she didn't say anything about the drama she saw and the outrageous things she did. That man is... Oh, he's super handsome. I wonder if he's some kind of celebrity. But I don't think he's one, or I would know him. Wow, now I'm dying with curiosity. This is the first time you praised a man's looks, you know? Oh, is that so? Hello? 
You really haven't cared about men before, Nora. You don't even look at them. Okay, so, what are you going to do about this super handsome Mr. Brown? Jessica's brow lifted again. She was so intrigued that she looked like she was very much more animated than Nora about this. Nora looked down at her hand wrapped around the lemonade bottle. She looked like she was considering something vital in her head while her friend was impatiently waiting for her. I... Nora started as she looked up to her friend, looking serious. I want him to be my boyfriend. For a while, Jessica gaped at her. It seemed like she was shocked. But the moment she recovered, a huge bright smile curved upon her face. Okay, that's my girl. You're finally hearing my advice. My innocent bun finally learned to become daring. Jessica was happy, and for some reason, proud. Like a happy mother who had just witnessed her child finally learning to walk on her own for the first time. Jessica, I want to impress him. So I want to ask you to... Honey, leave it to me. I promise to dress you up and turn you into the most stunning woman on earth. After their talk, Nora told Jessica that she would contact her when she decided to meet him. Jessica offered to help her get him, but Nora simply told her that she had to learn how to do it herself. This, of course, made her friend beam happily again. Okay, just call me if you need help, okay? And about your outfit, don't even worry about it. I'll make sure that the handsome man will fall in love with you at first sight. Was all Jessica promised before the two of them parted. Nora couldn't tell her friend that she was not trying to make him fall for her at all. She also didn't say anything negative about the man. She didn't tell her that he was heartless and cold, nor that he told her he didn't like her. And most of all, she didn't tell her that the man was dangerous. She had only kept these things from her friend because Nora knew that if Jessica found out what kind of man she had chosen, she would surely go against it. Jessica had always been protective of her, so she could already foresee her reaction if she found out about just how strange and mysterious the man was. It was already dark when she arrived home. Her family waited for her again before they all ate dinner together. Once in her room, Nora took the piece of paper out from her drawer. She stared at the number before taking a deep breath. Feeling the determination burn inside her, she typed the number on her phone. What a surprise. Nora saved the number as Mr. Black Leather Jacket on her contact list. She wanted to send him a message, but she didn't know what to even ask. Should she shamelessly ask for the man's address? No, no, that would be too creepy. Then how would she meet him? Before she knew it, Nora drifted into sleep without even accomplishing her goal for the night. In the end, she didn't send Mr. Black Leather Jacket a single message. The next morning, Nora woke up early as always. After eating breakfast with her family, she then drove to work. She spent a pleasant morning with the kids at the orphanage that day. As always, she felt, at the very least, recharged and full of energy. Perhaps being with the happy and innocent little kids throughout the day filled her heart with pure happiness. When she left the orphanage, Nora sat in her car and headed towards home. She wanted to go home early today. Even though she had forgotten about her plan of sending Mr. Black Leather a message, that man, that mystifying, outrageously gorgeous Mr. Brown's face, still popped occasionally in her head. Strangely, she couldn't completely take him off her mind, despite being busy the entire day. It took her longer than usual to drive back home. Winter had started, and ice covered the whole streets. Their house was located in the suburbs of the town as her grandparents were old. They always wanted a quiet place to live, away from the rumbling noise of the city. That was why they chose to live in this somewhat secluded place. The road home was pretty empty at this time. The entire place was surrounded by thick green trees on either side of the road. Nora really liked the place. However, the icy road was definitely dangerous. But she had already grown used to it by now. And not to forget, she was always a careful driver. Her car was pretty slow, despite the road being almost empty. 
As she turned into the straight road in the middle of a forested area, Nora accelerated a little, when out of the blue, she saw a deer run across the road in front of her. She immediately stepped on the brake pedal, but it looked like she might have reacted too late. She was sure she was going to hit it. However, before she knew it, her tires squealed as she swerved, and thankfully, she avoided hitting the deer barely. But then, in the next second, she heard a loud deafening thud. Her car crashed into something. Into another car. The car she hit screeched towards the right, and it hit the tree by the roadside. Nora's car finally halted, and thanks to her seatbelt, she was safe. Nora breathed deeply, her heart racing and her hands trembling. She forced herself to calm down. What came first in her mind was the person in the other car. So she immediately looked for the other car, and when she saw that it had hit a tree, her heart pounded in nervousness. Oh my god, are they okay? She didn't waste a moment and stepped out of her car. She frantically rushed towards the black car, praying that everyone on board was safe. As she approached the vehicle, the door opened. A man around his fifties came out wearing a formal black suit. To her relief, he didn't seem to be hurt anywhere either. Are you okay? I'm so sorry. I was trying to avoid hitting the deer and this happened. Nora was panicking as she apologized. She knew this was trouble, but what else could she do? The old man just sighed, creasing his brows upon seeing the damaged car. Nora somehow calmed down upon seeing that the old man seemed carefree and not worried at all. She then followed his line of sight, and as soon as she saw what kind of car it was, Nora's jaw dropped. The car before her was a handsome black luxury car. Oh my god. Nora almost felt like her blood drained out of her. Where would she get the money to pay for the damage to this kind of luxurious car? Why did it have to be like this? Why? Without answering her, the old man walked around the vehicle and opened the door to the back passenger seat. Sir, what are we going to do about this? The car is pretty damaged, he said, and Nora quickly followed the old man. When she saw that man's faker in the back seat, who was being addressed by the old man as Sir, Nora knew that he was the owner. I'm so sorry. I was trying to avoid hitting a deer, so... Suddenly, Nora trailed off as soon as she saw the man's face. M mr Brown? She was utterly shocked. Of all people, why was it him? What was this gorgeous creature doing here, of all places? The man in the back passenger seat, who was lazily leaning his head on the headrest with his eyes closed, finally moved upon hearing her voice. He opened his eyes and turned to look at her. Yellow, he mumbled upon seeing her. He stepped out, and when he saw the awful damage to his car, the man slowly leaned on the car's door, crossing his arms on his chest as he looked at her. He was wearing a long black coat, and he was simply breathtaking. His black wardrobe and ink-black hair, and the black car behind him, caused his skin to look even paler. He was simply out of this world, that anyone would think of him as someone that only existed in dreams. His features were unlike anything that could have come from the human world. Nora didn't wear her thick eyeglasses that day, nor did she braid her hair. Her clothes were, as usual, unflattering, and she didn't wear any makeup at all. Uh, um, m m Mr. Brown, oh, I'm so sorry. She apologized to him again. I, I tried to... Avoid hitting the deer. He took the words out of her mouth. His voice was as deep and pleasant to the ears as she remembered. Yes, that's right. I wasn't speeding. Please believe me. If I say that I believe you, do you think that solves the problem? Um, I... How much do you think the cost will be to repair the damage to your car? She swallowed while the man just smirked. He looked amused, seeing her fidget nervously in front of him. Mr. Davis, how much do you think this will cost to fix? This damage might cost a hundred thousand dollars, the old man replied. 
and Nora felt like her blood instantly dried up. She was so shocked that she couldn't speak for a long while. Where the hell would she get such a huge amount of money? Nora was still stunned when the man chuckled. He moved closer to her, his eyes on her yellow scarf again. Why are you always wearing yellow scarves? He suddenly asked. Nora finally snapped and immediately answered him. Because I only have yellow scarves at home. Oh, that's amusing. The corner of his lips was up and he looked at her as if she was a part of a comedy show. You love the color yellow, huh? I like all colors. My mother just loved the sight of yellow scarves on me, so she made a lot of it. Hmm, huh, indeed. Your mother is right. The bright yellow scarf suits you. Nora didn't know why, but her heart skipped a beat. She liked that he didn't mock her for it, or told her she looked like a sunflower like everyone else. But wait, are they really going to talk about her yellow scarf in this situation? Um, Mr. Brown, about the damage to your car, I, uh, I... Nora was stammering. She didn't know what to do with this. She didn't have any money to pay for it, and there was no way she would let her family find out about this. As she struggled to think about what she should say, she heard him chuckle again. What's wrong with him? Was there something funny about the situation? Nora looked at him with a confused face when the man leaned in on her. You really are amusing, Miss Forbes. You didn't look this pale and troubled when you offered yourself to me. I think your sense of danger is pretty messed up, little lamb, he said, showing her his breathtaking, wicked smirk again. Somehow, what he said seemed to have some truth to it. She was acting like this was far scarier than what she did that night. But to her, this was scarier, because she could go to jail for this. She only had a year left in this world. So how could she accept spending what remained of her life in jail? Or paying for debt by having to work her ass off? Now that he made her remember that night in this troublesome situation, something popped in Nora's head. She moved closer to him and looked up at him with her big, clear eyes. Mr. Brown, do you pay your contracted girlfriends? She asked innocently but firmly. The man raised a brow upon seeing the intensity in her eyes. And why are you asking? Nora fell silent for a moment. When she opened her mouth to answer, someone beat her and spoke first. You already know what she's trying to say. I don't understand why you're refusing such an offer from a cute lady like her. That someone butted in, and when Nora turned to look at the source of the voice, she saw Mr. Black Leather standing on the other side of the car. He was resting his chin on his palm as he watched them. It appeared that he too was inside the car. The moment Nora met his eyes, the man smiled. <laughs> Hello, Miss Forbes. You're right. He compensates his contracted girlfriends. By a lot. He grinned, and Nora immediately returned her gaze to the man right in front of her. For a moment, she saw him throwing deathly glares towards Mr. Black Leather but it immediately disappeared, like it was just an illusion the moment he stared back at her. Mr. Brown, I want to be your next contracted girlfriend, she declared. Her voice was as decisive as ever. There was no hesitation in her eyes at all.